And today you and I are redeemed because Christ broke the cause of stall and struggle. And I want you to believe this. In today's video, I want to speak about breaking the cause, how to overcome negative thinking. In Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, the scripture says, The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. One of the errors of this present time and age is the fact that people try to spend their time, years, and energy to get rich and become wealthy and later have to spend their wealth to become healthy. It is a problem that people today turn into prayer. Oh God, please don't let me spend my years to get this money to get rich and later have to spend this money just to get healthy because it is a cause. Number one, breaking the cause of toil and struggle. The blessing of the Lord makes you become rich and God himself does not add sorrow with the blessing that he gives to you. Anything anyone is enjoying in this life and calls it a blessing, but it has sorrow in it, it is not the blessing of the Lord. What does sorrow mean? Sorrow means hurt, pain, toil. And that is what we see daily as people are struggling to make ends meet. People are toiling. People have to cut their neck to be able to get something done. And at the end of the day, the result they get is not even commiserating with the hard work that was put into what they did. And we have to go back to the root of this. Why do we have to struggle so hard before we can even get a breakthrough? It is because there was an underlying cause on earth, on the ground, against man. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 b, the scripture says, The ground is caused because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living. Now you realize from this that trying to earn a living was not part of God's plan for man. Originally, we were not supposed to struggle to earn a living because God already made provision for everything we needed in life. And I want to lead you to a place of having a victor's mind of knowing that since Adam fell, it did not stop there. Yeah, we've been struggling even till today. Everyone is struggling to make ends meet, but it doesn't have to be that way. In some cases, when the favor of God locates a man and a man encounters God, his grace and his favor, you see that man having breakthrough that he doesn't have to do so much, but a lot is actually happening for such a person. And you can be that person. And that is such a person that encounters the favor of God that brings blessing into his life and takes away the cost. The blessing is actually an empowerment to succeed, to protect and preserve someone. The cause is actually the reverse of that, which is an empowerment to fail. Instead of succeeding, whatever you do, you cannot see a good result. At the garden, the ground was caused because of man. And today we have to struggle before we can earn or make a living. So Christ came so that he can redeem us from having to struggle. Work is noble, but then toil with work is not noble. It is not God's plan. It was not in God's blueprint, but it happened because of the cause. So something happened to the ground in Luke chapter 22, verse 44. It says, And being in agony of mind, he prayed all the more earnestly and intensely, and his sweat became like great clots of blood dropping down upon the ground. I love it more in the Passion Translation. He prayed even more passionately like one being sacrificed until he was in such intense agony of spirit that his sweat became drops of blood dripping onto the ground. I know sometimes people argue with this passage to say it was not his blood that dripped. It was a metaphor to say that his sweat dripped like blood. And the fact is that it's scientifically proven that there is a condition called hematidrosis whereby your sweat glands can actually sweat blood. And that is what happened to Jesus. This condition, they say, hematidrosis is a condition in which capillary blood vessels that feed the sweat glands rupture, causing them to exude blood. It occurs under conditions of extreme physical or emotional stress. In that scripture, we learned that Jesus went through agony, which is an extreme state of emotional stress. And then he actually sweat blood. And the Bible says this blood dripped on the ground. If you know the power of the blood of Jesus, you would know and believe and accept that 
that blood was dripped on the ground for a purpose of redemption. The same way the ground was caused for man to struggle to make a living, Christ's blood dripped on the ground such that redemption should come to everyone who believes in him. And today you and I are redeemed because Christ broke the cause of stall and struggle. And I want you to believe this. Pay attention to this. If you do not believe in Christ and the finished work and this redemption that he has brought to you by breaking the cause of struggle, you will keep on struggling. We have lived to this point that we have adapted to struggle as a normal in life. But as a kingdom person, a believer in Jesus, you are not supposed to struggle aimlessly. In First Peter it said, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. So I want you to know that the cause on the ground for you to toil and struggle is broken. And it is Jesus that broke this cause. For you to come under the blessing, it is for you to actually believe in him. It is believing in Christ that helps you break the cause of struggle. Believing in the finished work of Christ. Believing that Christ has brought redemption through his blood to the ground. Such that when you put your hands to do things, the works of your hands can prosper. That is why Jesus always encouraged the disciples. Do not bother about all these things, what to wear, what to eat, what to drink, because it is the ethan, the people that do not know God that worry about these things. Instead, focus on God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added. All he said is that all these things are provision that God already knew you needed and he has made available. All you need is to seek God so that you can receive these provisions that God has already made for you because the cause for you to struggle has been broken. In Luke chapter 5, we see Simon Peter and his friends. Jesus told them, cast your net at the right side. And he said, we've toiled all night. We walked out all night and nothing came out of it. But at your word, we are going to do it. And when they threw their net, according to his word, the Bible says they caught a net breaking, boat sinking load of fish. I don't know what will happen in your life, if you start trusting God that you don't need to struggle in life, but he has already paid the price for you to live life under his favor and under his grace. Number two, breaking the cause of the law. As a believer, you know that it is your faith in Christ who broke the cause and brought redemption that helps you live under the blessing of God. It is not you by performance that you get to break a cause upon your life. It is Christ who is your anchor. It is Christ who is the object of your salvation. He is the one that breaks the cause for you. Your own is to believe that he has broken the cause and tap into the redemption that he has provided for you. The scripture says in Galatians, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause. For it is written, Cost is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law, to do them. This video is not for everyone but for the people who believe in Christ Jesus in his finished work and the fact that his death is their own death, that he is their righteousness. And the scripture says you who have believed in Christ to this point, you don't need to go back to the law because this is the implication. When you go back to try to be justified under the law, you come under a curse. And this is where a lot of sincere believers come under the curse of the law in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The people of Israel were not able to keep the law. None of them could keep the law perfectly. Only one man, the man Jesus Christ, he kept the law of God and he fulfilled the law. As scripture said of him that Christ is the end of the law to bring righteousness unto all who believe in him. So Christ fulfilled the law because it was a contract and he met all the requirements of the law to bring us to a place of redemption and salvation and it brought us righteousness. So your salvation is not through law keeping but by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is where you need to know you don't have to start going under the law because you would go under a cause. If you deviate you are only putting yourself to fall a victim under the cause of the law. So the cause of the law was broken by Christ. I want to establish this. Christ has redeemed you 
from under the course of the law. And for you to break the course of the law on your life, you need to come out from under the law to live under Christ, knowing that he has broken the course of the law. Now, what are these course of the law? Because I might just be saying this and you are like, what are these courses? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the scripture lists a number of these courses. And I will lead you to show you that somehow we have normalized some of these courses as if it is a normal way of life and the way life should go. And I want to read a verse in Deuteronomy 28 about one of the cause of the law, but I don't want you to let fear grip your heart because you are not under the cause of the law. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 22, it says, The Lord will smite you with consumption, with fever and inflammation, fiery heat, sword and drought, blasting and mild you, they shall pursue you until you perish. Now, this is threatening, but the truth is, the scripture says in Galatians, but Christ has redeemed us from the cause pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the cause for our wrongdoing, for it is written in the scriptures, cause is everyone who is hung on a tree. I want you to know by this, that sickness is a cause of the law. Negative thinking is a cause of the law. I would like you, if you have the strength and the courage to read through Deuteronomy 28, read through all those causes, but have it in your mind that these causes are not for you because you are not under them. You are under the blessings of Christ in your coming in and your going out. You are blessed. You are blessed in the fruit of your body. I want to make this point very clear because somehow a lot of believers have come to a place of believing that sickness is normal. Such that some believers even expect the fever when it's coming. They know, oh, in a month, the fever is coming again. But this shouldn't be where you stay in your mind. That's a negative thinking. You need to break that pattern. The Bible says that this fever is a cause of the law. Which is, if you are under the cause of the law, you are supposed to have fever. You are supposed to have inflammation. All the uncontrollable heat that you feel in your body, fiery heat. You having migraine is also a cause of the law. Negative thinking that wants to make you run mad and crazy and confused is a cause of the law. And all of this, we can see it and want to classify it as a normal in life. But you are not just like anybody else. You are a believer in Christ Jesus, whom Jesus himself has redeemed from under the cause of the law. And if you believe he has redeemed you, then don't go back into it. Don't fall a victim back into the cause of the law. When sickness hits your body, remind that sickness that by his stripes you are healed. That the spirit that rose Christ from the dead will revive your mortal body. And God actually led me to read these scriptures in Deuteronomy 28 about the causes of the law. And when I read it, it opened my eyes and I was asking myself, so why do I get sick? Is it that I'm still operating under the cause? That was when I told myself and I had this conviction that sickness cannot have a part in me. And I don't remember the last time I took a paracetamol or the least drug I can name of. I don't remember the last time I took it and that's not on pride. That's on Christ. I believe in him for my healing. Does that mean I don't feel symptoms? I feel some symptoms of fever and I ask God because I have trained my faith to believe for healing. John in 3 John said to Gaius, I wish and I hope and I pray that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So what leads you to this prosperity in your health comes from your soul. As much as you are putting in your faith, training your faith in the word of God, knowing that you are not under the cause of the law, you can come to a place of training your faith to believe God for healing in your body, to believe God to heal the migraine when it hits, to believe God to heal the confusion and the negative pattern of thinking when you get to that point. Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of fever. And to me then, I thought that fever is just the simplest thing. Why not make a concoction or something for them? That time they didn't have drugs like we do. Why not go get a drug? And I'm not saying you shouldn't treat yourself. If you are sick in your body, treat yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. But all I'm emphasizing here is 
Train your faith to believe God for healing. Christ has redeemed us. If this is a blessing already, I would like to hear from you in the comment section what your thoughts are concerning this. Number three, breaking the pronounced causes. I know a lot of people who say that their parents have pronounced a cause on their head. I've experienced this first hand. So it's a product of ignorance for a parent to actually pronounce a cause upon his or her child. Sometimes out of anger, Maybe the child didn't do as they wanted and they pronounced the cause. But I want to let you know that none of those cause will stand. The scripture says, like a floating sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved cause will not land on its intended victim. Any cause that is not deserved cannot land on you. And let me shock you with this gospel that any cause pronounced on you cannot land on you because it's undeserved. You've already received the grace of God, which is undeserved favor. So no cause has the right to land on you. In scriptures, in Numbers chapters 22 to 24, we see the story of the Israelites and Moab, whereby the king of Moab came to this prophet called Balaam and hired him to cause Israel for him. And scripture says, Balaam was warned by God that these people are blessed and they cannot be caused. That is your story. That didn't mean Israel were perfect in their camp. But to God and in God's eye, His grace covering them, they could not fail because of God's promise over them. Today, you have God's promise over you because Christ has paid the price for all your sins and you are redeemed by Him. You have redemption through His blood. And no matter which way Balak turned with Balaam, to look for a way, if God would change his mouth, the cause could not stand. And it is your place as a believer to stay under Christ because this is where no cause pronounced upon you can have effect. None. The Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn, which is you with your mouth, shall condemn the tongues that rise against you in judgment. So don't confess that the cause is pronounced on you by either a father, a mother, an elder, that it can prosper. Don't confess that it is why your life is not moving forward. Don't confess it, don't believe it, don't accept it. Instead, condemn those tongues. Condemn every cause. Condemn everything that has been spoken against you and speak life to you through Christ. Jesus did not come to give you a meager, small, puny life. He didn't come to give you a small breath that you'll be hiding under somebody's shadow to breathe. He came to give you an abundance life. So what are you doing with this life? Get up and shine. Get up and live. Live this overflowing life and know that no cause, none, nobody can cause you. Not even your father, not even your mother, because you have someone greater than all of them joined together. Christ Jesus, your savior. And again, there are some people out of anger that just feel out cause anyhow. God punish you. God do this against you and all of that. And I'm like, do you think God has your errand boy that you can just tell him, go and punish this person for me? There are pastors even that stand up on their pulpits and try to threaten people with causes. I even try to pronounce causes on people. And I tell you, they don't know what they are doing. It's ignorance. The Bible says that human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. If someone is angry and pronounces any cause they are pronouncing, they are just wasting their saliva. You are not caused. You are blessed. And you need to live under this blessing knowing that the pronounced cause against you cannot stand. It is broken as it comes out. And I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope you've picked something from this video. I hope you are inspired and encouraged. This is my YouTube channel. I am Uwe McMahon. Do well to subscribe to this channel and then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It's my pleasure to see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.